So far in 2020, the mighty Google has launched three new Pixel smartphones, which is actually pretty restrained compared with some manufacturers. Motorola, I'm looking at you. So earlier this year, we had the Pixel 4a, and then it's just been joined by the Pixel 4a 5G and the Pixel 5 flagship phone. Now, at the time I shot this video, the Pixel 4a is the only one that's actually available on the Google Store, and it's also the most affordable at 349 quid. But it is just about to be joined by the Pixel 5 flagship phone, which is the most expensive at a whopping 600 pounds. If you want the piggy in the middle Pixel, 4a 5g though you'll have to be a bit more patient that's not actually hit in the uk google store until november which will at least give you a bit of time to save up the 500 pounds that google wants for it but if you're thus far undecided about which google pixel smartphone might be best for you well let's do a full side-by-side -side comparison of the camera tech the performance the battery life everything you need to know and for more on the latest greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell cheers Alrighty, so i've arranged the pixels in price order so you've got the cheapest pixel 4a here on the left the pixel 4a 5g in the middle and the pixel 5 on the right and as you can see when they're all stacked up side by side there is one immediate clear difference between them and that is the size the pixel 4a 5g is the behemoth of the bunch at 6.2 inches although obviously still pretty compact compared with a lot of 2020 smartphones meanwhile the pixel 5 is 6 inches and the pixel 4a offers the most pleasing hand feel at a very compact 5.8 inches but all three phones offer a comfy grip you've got nice rounded corners and everything as well and of course they're easy to use one-handed because you can drag down that notifications bar from anywhere on screen and even using the rear-mounted fingerprint sensor. In basically every other regard, the Pixel smartphones do look very, very similar. From the front, you've got the same selfie camera orifice tucked away in the corner. However, the Pixel 5 does have smaller bezels compared with the other two. It's only a slight difference, uh, but it does mean that basically the Pixel 5 and the Pixel 4a are almost the same dimensions. And there is one other key difference between these three that you can't actually see, and that is that you've got Gorilla Glass 6 covering the display here on the Pixel 5, whereas the other two use the older Gorilla Glass 3. And touch wood, several months on the Pixel 4a's Gorilla Glass 3 screen is still scratch free, uh, despite the fact that it's been out in about a fair bit, but that Gorilla Glass 6 will offer better protection. All right, time to flip these bad boys over. Now around the arse end, these three pixels again aren't exactly looking very distinctive from one another. And the Pixel 4a and the 4a 5G are available in this highly exciting just black color and that is basically it. The Pixel 5, you do have a choice of colors. You've got just black again. Otherwise, you can grab it in sort of sage, which is kind of a mossy green, which is very divisive. Some people think it looks quite funky. Others think it looks like a big bag of cat sick, just further proof that you can't please all the people all the time. It would definitely be nice to have a more vibrant color choice, but hey ho. Uh, but there's actually a difference in the materials between these three. So the Pixel 4a and the 4a 5G are constructed from polycarbonate. So it's a plastic backing which stretches right around the edges as well. In the case of the Pixel 5, though it's actually constructed from 100% recycled aluminium. They do all have a soft touch finish which is rather nice although in the case of the Pixel 5 it is again very divisive it does actually feel a little bit like cardboard. And the Pixel 5 isn't just more rugged because of its metallic build and also the Gorilla Glass 6 screen you've also got full IPX8 water resistance on this thing so it can be dunked in a sink a bath whatever and survive just fine. The others will quite happily survive in a bit of inclement British weather uh, but I definitely wouldn't go take them into the jacuzzi with yeah. And you'll also notice, although it is actually fairly well blended in with that surface, and that all three of these Pixel smartphones have a fingerprint sensor slapped there on the back. And the sensor is exactly the same on all three of these Pixel phones, just as responsive, just as accurate. I've certainly had no troubles with it on any of these devices, but sadly there's no face recognition in order to uh, just add an alternative option for unlocking, as well as that fingerprint sensor. And if you open up all three of these Google Pixel phones as well, you'll find that there's only space in there for a single SIM card, there's no double SIM tray, and no space either for any micro SD memory card action to expand the storage. However, all three Pixel phones do at least support eSIM, so if you are going to be doing a lot of traveling, you want to get an eSIM contract on the go for that international travel, then all good. And speaking of storage as well, all three Pixel phones offer 128 gigs of space. So to be honest, I haven't personally missed that micro SD uh, memory card action at all. Now, thankfully, this comparison is pretty straightforward when it comes to the software, because it's basically exactly the same on all three. You've got, of course, stock Android version 11, the latest version of Google's OS. And that, of course, means you get the exact same feature sets on all three of these, the digital well-beings, the dark modes, all that good stuff. The level of customization is exactly the same as well. So you can dive on in there and change the look and feel of the icons, the colors, the fonts, all that stuff. And Google is always good at supporting its Pixel smartphones as well. You're guaranteed at least three years of security and OS updates. And you get the same benefits with all three of these Pixel phones as well, 
include in the online storage, stuff like that. Oh, and it's also worth mentioning that all three of these have Google's Titan M security chip stashed on there as well, just to confidentially store and encrypt your personal data. Let's move on to the display tech. And of course, all three Pixel smartphones have OLED displays, so nice and bright on those top levels. Nice sharp contrast as well with really deep blacks. You've got full HDR10 support for the likes of Netflix. You can tweak the colors if you like in the display settings, so you can have them more natural or you can uh, give them a bit of a boost just to make everything really, really sparkle. Really good if you're watching a bit of animation or like a wildlife documentary, something like that. And in fact, the absolute only difference between these three is the fact that you've got this smooth display feature here on the Pixel 5, which you don't get on the other two. That's because you can boost it up to 90 hertz refresh rate rather than the standard 60 hertz, which is all that these two support. And it's a full HD plus resolution on all three of these smartphones as well. So technically the Pixel 4a actually has the sharpest visuals because it's the smallest screen, but all three of them are absolutely fine because they are quite small stature displays. To begin with, you get really nice, sharp, fine visuals, plenty of details shining through. So all three Pixel phones smashing out the park for the visuals. What about the audio? Well, technically it's a stereo speaker setup on all three of them, but all three of them, the earpiece speaker, let's face it, is a bit cack. It's definitely the bottom mounted speaker on all three that is pulling the grunt of the weight here. Uh, but let's just give it a quick sample. Now, as it was with the original Pixel 4a, Google has been a little bit of a prick tease with the new Pixel 4a 5G. Which now, just cover up that bottom speaker. So as you can hear there, decent quality audio until you muffle that bottom speaker and then it gets very, very tiddy and weak indeed. And it's exactly the same on the other two as well. As it was with the original actually isn't landed in the UK until November. Now as it was with the original Pixel T's with the new Pixel 4a 5G, which actually isn't landed in the UK until November. So no, it's not really a true stereo speaker experience on any of these Pixel smartphones. But to be perfectly honest, the speakers are still loud and clear enough to be uh, heard in a noisy environment. And the good news is you do have a headphone jack on the Pixel 4a and the Pixel 4a 5G. But unfortunately, it has been killed off for the Pixel 5 flagship, which is a real damn shame. So you will have to go Bluetooth only, unfortunately, with this one. There is a difference between these Pixels for performance as well. And unsurprisingly, the more money you pay, the better the performance. What you get is the Snapdragon 730G chipset here on the Pixel 4a, whereas the other two use the more capable Snapdragon 765G chipset. And while the Pixel 4a phones have six gigs of RAM, you've got eight gigs stuffed into the flagship. However, I wouldn't be put off the Google Pixel 4a from a performance standpoint, because as you can see from these Geekbench uh, benchmarking scores, it still packs a decent punch. Certainly, you can happily play the likes of Call of Duty and PUBG Mobile on top detail levels with a nice smooth consistent frame rate as you'll see if you checked out my Pixel 4a review. And it's very much the same story on the Pixel 4a 5G and the Pixel 5 as well. Great gaming experience. But of course one of the major advantages of the 765G is it actually has a built-in 5G modem. So you've got 5G support on the 4a 5G and the 5 but not on the standard Pixel 4a. As for the battery tech, well the Pixel 5 rocks the biggest battery of the bunch at 4080 milliamps. It's actually slightly smaller here on the 4A5G, despite the fact the phone is larger. It's a 3,885 milliamp. And then here on the Pixel 4A, that's shaved right down to a 3,140 milliamp cell. But again, don't be put off the Pixel 4A just because of that significantly smaller battery, because the good news is in my everyday testing, I found that it would still last me the full day, even if I had plenty of screen on time using it as a sat nav, playing with the camera, watching video, stuff like that. In fact, you quite happily get all day battery life from all three of these smartphones. And in a side-by-side -side media test, the interesting thing is, that the Pixel 4a actually performs better. You'll get a full 10 hours of video streaming out of this thing compared with the 4a 5G and the 5, which lasted around seven hours, all on the same brightness with the same settings. And the reason for that is basically just the general energy efficiency of that excellent Snapdragon 730G chipset. And it's 18 watt wired charging on all three of these smartphones. But the Pixel 5 flagship is the only one that actually supports wireless charging as well. So you can stick it on a Qi standard wireless pad. And you can also get a bit of reverse wireless charging on the go with this. So if you've got some uh, headphones, something like that, that support wireless charging as well, just stick them on the back and you can share the Pixel's power with your accessories. Last up, let's have a squint at the camera tech, one of the true strengths of any Pixel smartphone. And it's actually a 12.2 megapixel dual pixel sensor on all three of these smartphones, the exact same 
primary lens. The only difference is that the Pixel 4 a 5G and the Pixel 5 also boast a secondary 16 megapixel ultra wide angle lens. And because it's the exact same primary camera sensor uh, with built in optical image stabilization and everything, and the exact same camera software on all three of these smartphones, unsurprisingly, the photo results are absolutely identical. So, in other words, you can expect nice, uh, sharp detail and accurate looking colors in pretty much any conditions, even low light. You play around with the exact same camera features and everything as well. You've got the same toggles, you've got the motion photo mode, for instance. Uh, you've got good old portrait mode, of course, which uh, can just capture a nice crisp uh, image of your subject while blurring the background with a bokeh style effect. And you also have the excellent night sight mode on all three as well, which just takes lots of shots at different exposure levels and uh, shoves them all together for a really nice, well-balanced image with incredibly natural looking colors. As I mentioned before, the only real difference between the three is the fact that you do have that ultra wide angle lens, which you can swap to at any time here on the Google Pixel 4a 5G and on the Pixel 5. There is a difference when it comes to shooting video as well. However, you can shoot 4K resolution on all three of these Pixel phones, but only for you. 5G and the Pixel 5 will actually allow you to do it at 60 frames per second. Here on the Pixel 4 e you can only shoot 4K at 30 FPS. I guess that's just a limitation of that 730G chipset. And in the case of the Pixel 5 flagship phone, you can also fast access the slow motion and time lapse features uh, via the video mode, uh, whereas on the others you have to dive into the more camera modes to get those. I'm not really sure why it's different on the flagship and not the others. Maybe that's something that'll be coming to the others too. And last up, flipping around to the front facing selfie cameras, it's an 8 megapixel selfie snapper and all three of them which may sound quite low resolution but to be perfectly frank it's a more than enough detail certainly where I'm concerned and of course as usual you've got your portrait mode smart so you can blur out the background if you want it to be all about you and you do have support for night sight as well if you're going to be shooting a, uh, a low light selfie and there you have it that is how the three 2020 pixel smartphones stack up against one another so that pixel 45 g as I say should be coming in about a month's time if you can hang on that long if you can't quite stretch to the flagship phone or you're really not that bothered about having the water resistance, the wireless charge, and all that, that shenanigans, then the 4A 5G is definitely a solid choice. Otherwise, the 4A is there if you're on a really tight budget, but you still get that excellent camera tech, you still get a slick OLED, you get that nice stock Android experience, quite a lot of the advantages that the others offer too. So which Pixel phone are you most tempted by? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Stay tuned for my full in-depth review of the Pixel 5 and the 4A 5G coming soon. And for more on the latest, greatest tech, please do pause, subscribe, and ding that notifications bell. Cheers!